Hey guys, Nathan Duck River Honey, and I'm going through my hives today, doing inspections and just doing the needful on all of them. So I've made it through about half my hives so far, and mm -hmm. I've got to say that I'm pleased, I'm sort of surprised. Uh, it's almost hard for me to say that, but I think they're, they're on track. So um, I tend to nitpick and be overly critical of myself, especially. And uh, so it's a little hard for me to say that. I uh, don't want to jinx myself or anything, but I've been really pleased with where the bees are at. I've got some that are really big and I've pulled them back by taking brood frames away and boosting some smaller colonies. And then I've got some that are right on track, but they are honey bound. And I've got some that are weak and need to be boosted. I've got two hives in this yard that uh, I'm gonna show you at least one of them. Uh, this colony, has got red push pins in the back meaning it had a mite issue in the fall and winter um, it's been reduced this was a a triple medium it's now a double medium that means that it was very weak coming out of winter i've got another one in this yard that was very weak coming out of winter and i'm going to open this one up i'm going to try to show you um, a diversity of what i'm seeing uh, not just the normal. I want to show you small hives and, and when, when I'm making the decision whether to boost them or not. Uh, this hive, I don't know what's going to happen with it. If it looks really bad, then I may pinch the queen off and just reuse the, um, the equipment somewhere else. But if there's promise in here, then I will try to jump into one of my overly big hives that are going to swarm early and pull a bird frame out and give to them. Or I can move this hive and swap positions with a bigger hive and that will give foragers to this hive basically. So um, we're just going to jump in, take a look, and I'm going to try to show you several different things. Now I reverse this hive. Uh, when I was in here the last time, so the brood nest should be on the bottom. They should have had some empty space on top. And I did that with basically all of my hives. I just want the brood nest on the bottom. I want some empty space on top. Let's see if they've moved up here at all yet. Let's jump into the heart of the matter. kind of trying yeah she's laying laying this up she doesn't have a lot of bees in here but she's trying so I've got some older brood that's emerging there I don't like that shotgun pattern. She is coming in and trying to backfill. Over here it doesn't look too bad. Alright, so not great so far, but not... I'm not seeing enough to make me call them out either. Why? Well... If I had a big nuke battery built up, I would just find this queen, probably pinch her off, and replace them with a nuke. And there's more than one thing that makes me say that. They uh, had a high mite population last fall and winter. And, you know, that's not something I, I want. So... Um, there's more than one thing that, that makes me say that. But I'm trying to build numbers this year. I don't have a lot of extra colonies. I don't have a bunch of nukes. So I think we're going to try to boost them. We're going to find a big colony and uh, try to give them some, some brood. So this is my colony that was so big they were trying to starve and I found one more dead out that had a bunch of honey on it. So I took a, a box of honey and put on top of them so I wouldn't have to feed them. 
And they are doing as expected. They have filled that up. This is what happens when you have comb left in a hive over winter. The bees will pick the wax coating off of the foundation if it's not drawn out. And then the next spring, they'll try to cross comb it and build wonky comb. So all of this that I find, I try to pull out. There's a really nice sheet of brood there, both sides. Queen here is doing a terrific job of building up. She's moving pretty fast though. And they're going to head towards swarming. I can tell that we're getting older working across the box here. The queen started laying over here and then moved her way over frame by frame. Uh, the wax or the cappings on this brood just looks older. It looks papery. It doesn't look new. All right, so I think I'm going to pick this frame. It doesn't have a as much brood on it as some of the others. It appears to be older brood. I think that this small hive over here will be able to keep this warm. I'm gonna look really, really carefully for the queen. I would love to not shake this frame off. I would love to give the clinging bees to this other hive over here. I think I'm just gonna shake it and then give them foragers. drop this frame of brood down here in the center so they can keep that warm so this hive right here is showing that they've got a lot of foragers out right now I'm gonna take a peek in them pretty big hive there See what they look like underneath. A lot of bees. Got drone brood going in. They probably need a box, but I'm not gonna give them one today because they're about to lose their forager force. Right, so the risk I see with this is sending a lot of foragers into this hive. Uh, they could be combative to the queen in there. They could kill her. Um, if they do, they might be doing me a favor because I want to requeen her anyway. So I'm willing to take this risk early in the season. You know, this, this time of year, I've got a lot of queen rearing weather and time ahead of me. So. I don't mind doing this sort of stuff right now. I would not be doing this sort of stuff in November.
All right, so I just boosted a hive. I took another big hive down. And this one, I would say that these three here are just almost perfect. They're like a Goldilocks hive. I really like these, uh, how they're doing. I, I've got a few others that perform this way. They go through the winter really heavy with small clusters, and then they start out in the spring in the bottom box. So I don't have to reverse them to get the brood uh, to get the brood nest down on the bottom board. I don't. I just don't have to do a lot with them. The only problem is they've got so much honey in here that they don't have a pathway to expand that brood nest. They're, they're going to swarm. Uh, just almost it, it's almost a certainty because they've got too much honey over the top of the brood nest So I need to go in and fix that right now and I'll probably use a mishmash of techniques on this sort of stuff Got a decent population not great But we are in a honey super the last time I was in this box, it was super heavy. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. So we're building comb, but we don't have drone brood in it yet. I'd say that's on track. Got pollen. A lot of beautiful looking pollen there that means we're probably going to hit brood on this frame and we are that is newly kept brood pretty fresh stuff there a lot of pollen coming in a lot of brood I think what we're going to do with them is uh, put some empty space in the middle of the nest, pull their frame feeder out. They don't need it. They need empty space. All right, so this is sort of like Greg Rogers spreading the brood technique. I'm just going to slip an empty comb in there give the queen a little bit of room to lay skip over another couple of frames so that that brood stays together I'll probably pull one this one up into the third box that's a nice pollen frame no brood on it All right, these girls are going to explode in about two and a half weeks. So we're gonna add a box to them right now. All right, so the problem that I see with this hive, we've got brood in one and two, we don't have any brood in three, and three is just solid honey all the way across. There's no room for the queen to move up. So we're going to change that. I'm just gonna checkerboard this top box. I gave her a couple of frames in that middle box. Now we're going to give her some in the top. So I'm starting with an empty frame on the wall here. I start with a honey frame on the wall there. It's just zigzag all the way across. All right, so I think this hive is ready to grow now. It's got room to grow. They've got plenty of resources. They don't, they are not showing a swarm impulse yet. 
Uh, that could change in two or three weeks. I think I'm uh, probably going to be able to pull resources out of them to split. You know, if I start grafting in mid to late March, it's March 4th right now. If I start grafting in mid to late March, I don't expect that I'm going to have to pull them back if, if at all or much if I do. Um, I, I do expect that I'll, I'll pull a split out of them though. Guys, I tell you what, it's like 60 degrees today, bluebird sky. We had terrible wind storms yesterday with, um, you know, we were out of power for about eight hours, so I had to get the generator out and my dad's generator out and all this. It's a, boy, it's like the payoff after the storm, I guess, uh, of the past week. It is, uh, days like this make you want to be a beekeeper. You know, there are some days that make you question why you ever decided to get into this, but days like this make you want to be a beekeeper. It is beautiful. I've just, I've had a tremendous amount of fun today. Really enjoy it. Guys, as always, if you've got any questions on what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next one.